Hey everyone, Theo here. Today I'm reviewing the Onyx Books Note Air 3C, which is a 10.3 inch e ink e reader tablet that uses Kaleido 3 technology. First of all, disclaimer this is a review unit provided by the company. In this video, I'll just present to you my findings so that you can decide whether or not this is worth the money. And the price of this tablet is 499 US dollars. And that does not include the flip case, which is sold separately or as a bundle. But at the time of this review, I don't have the price for the flip case yet. Let me give you the bottom line up front. This is a beautiful e-reader with solid build quality and it has pen support. The overall performance is quite smooth. I can flip through the pages pretty quickly and the visual quality is good. The text is sharp and there is color support even though the colors look kind of muted because right now Kaleido 3 only supports up to 4000 over colors and 16 levels of grayscale but from what I can see here the visuals do look good by e-reader standards now this tablet is running on Android 12 with their own custom UI which is very simple to navigate around and one of the big selling point is there is Google Play Store, so you can use this to install whichever ebook store or e-reader app that you are using. And you can install web browsers, note-taking apps, you can install whatever you want from the Google Play Store. This tablet has pretty good note-taking performance as well. You get 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of internal storage, but there is a micro SD card for storage expansion. For the downsides, um, the design could use some um, adjustment or improvement. So the USB-C port is located here on the tablet. If you use it with the flip case, um, you will have to open the flip case in order to charge the tablet because if the flip case is closed you cannot access the you cannot reach the charging port and this pen can attach magnetically by the side of the tablet however when you pick up the tablet like this there's a tendency for the pen to go in and i'm right-handed so i usually leave the tablet up for the right side and the third downside is by the way there is fingerprint unlock which works really fast and effectively the third downside is the auto rotation is too sensitive so sometimes when i'm just um, reading like this and i tilt the tablet slightly the tablet would change its orientation uh, even though i don't want it to change the orientation so you may have to turn off the auto rotation because for me it's too sensitive battery life for this tablet is pretty good even when i use this with 75 percent brightness for the front light so who are the people who will buy an e-reader like this well oh notice how the auto rotation switch very quickly even though i just moved the tablet like for a split second in the other orientation Okay, so this tablet is good for people who read a lot and for those who don't want to read on LCD or OLED displays due to the light. So with e-ink canvas, it's going to be more comfortable for your eyes for reading for long periods of time. And this large 10.3 inch display is ideal for reading comics, PDFs and magazines where you cannot adjust the text size. Alright, let's move on to the full review where we talk about the details. These are the items included in the box. There's the tablet, a SIM ejection tool for the micro SD card slot, a USB-C to USB-A charging cable, warranty card, quick start guide, the pen. This pen has a rubber cap which is quite soft and you can put this on the back. This pen uses Wacom EMR technology so it supports tilt, slightly over 4000 levels of pressure sensitivity and palm rejection. The build quality is quite solid, it has a nice weight to it and it feels comfortable in hand. This pen is almost cylindrical except for this flat side here which allows the pen to attach to the side of the tablet using the magnet or magnets here and the magnetic strength is quite strong. 
Now this pen is not powered by battery, so no charging is required. The pen tip is quite firm and has minimal to no movement. And it's a textured pen tip, so when you are writing on the display, there is this nice tactile feeling. And this display is laminated, so there is no gap between the line and the pen tip. There are no replacement pen tips included in the box, and these are textured pen tips, and the display surface is also textured, so these pen tips are going to wear down quite fast if you write often. And because this pen uses Wacom EMR technology, you can actually use other pens that use Wacom EMR technology, such as the Samsung S Pen, and I have taken out the pen tips for both pens. The length of the pen tip is quite similar, but this thicker part here for the Samsung S Pen tip is slightly shorter. So if you use this pen tip with the books pen, this will not go all the way in. So as you can see, it can move and it can bend. And if you break this, the pen tip will be stuck inside the pen. I cannot tell you how much the original pen tips cost because the price varies significantly depending on the seller. There are also other companies that make third-party pen tips. Let's look at the magnetic flip case which is sold separately or together as a bundle with the tablet. Now this flip case is really well made. This looks like PU leather to me. The book's logo is quite subtle. It doesn't attract attention. That's the flap to hold the pen or to prevent the pen from falling off. So there are magnets here which will attach to the back of the tablet. The magnetic strength is quite strong. So strong that you actually need to use some force to remove the tablet. And notice as I lift the tablet up, the auto rotation works. It's quite sensitive. So let's close this and the flap will protect the pen. And the magnets here are quite strong as well. If you are reading, you can push this all the way to the back and this will attach to the back. There is auto wake and sleep. Let me show you how fast the fingerprint unlock is. It's fast. It's also possible to fold this cover all the way to the back and use this flap to hold the cover so that when you hold the tablet this way, this flap will not flap around. There are some issues with the design of the tablet. So this side here is curved and the side of the pen is flat. While the magnet is strong, when you close the cover like this and you pick up the tablet this way, you can see the pen can actually move inside. So if you have to pick up the tablet, uh, you have to be a bit more careful so that you don't push the pen in or pick up the tablet from other sides. The other design issue is, okay, that happened again. The other design issue is the USB-C charging port is here. So in order to charge the tablet, you will have to open the flip case. You can fold a little triangle here to deploy the tablet this way. And this inner surface is the velvet type texture. So this is going to attract dust quite easily. The other way to fold the case is to push this part in and fold this part in and attach to the back of the tablet. The magnets here are not that strong or I could be folding it the wrong way. So this will deploy the tablet vertically. Let's look at the design of this tablet. This is a 10.3 inch e-ink e-reader tablet. It has 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of internal storage. It uses Qualcomm Snapdragon 665, which is an 8-core processor. This is a good looking design. It's simple, clean, and minimalist. It's almost squarish. The bezels are quite thin on these three sides, thicker here at the left, and that's the book's logo. This tablet supports auto rotation, so you can easily turn this around, hold it with your right hand. The weight is 430 grams, and as you can see, it's quite thin at just 5.8 millimeter. And you can use this in landscape orientation as well if you want to. 
Now on this side, there's the USB-C port, which you can see has a red outline. This is a nice design element. And this USB-C port can be used to transfer files as well, but the speed is USB 2. That's the micro SD card slot. There are two stereo speakers. The volume is not loud and the audio sounds slightly hollow, so the audio quality isn't that great. There is no 3.5 mm audio jack, so if you want to listen to your audiobooks, you will have to use Bluetooth headphones or earphones. There's the design element on the side that will continue to the back. This is not exactly red, it's maybe crimson or pastel red. I love the matte textured surface, but it's quite susceptible to fingerprints. And this feels like metal to me. The I mentioned the build quality is extremely solid with minimal to no flex at all. There is nothing at the bottom side and on this side. And at the top, we have a power button. The built-in fingerprint scanner is quite effective and fast. On this side of the tablet, you can attach the pen. The location of the magnet is placed in such a way that you should attach the pen with the point facing down so that you get the strongest magnetic attraction and it's quite strong. So this is a 10.3 inch display. The resolution is 1860 by 2480. So the aspect ratio is four by three. This size 10.3 inch is considered big for an e-reader, especially when you compare this to an eight inch e-reader. So the advantage of having such a big display is if you read comics, PDFs or magazines often and comics, PDFs and magazines do not allow you to change the font size. So reading those materials, those content on a bigger display is just more satisfying. The main reason is because the text is larger. So the reading experience will be better when you can actually read the text more comfortably. If you don't read PDFs, comics, or magazines often, I don't think there is a compelling reason to buy a big 10-inch e-reader. For example, if you are reading mostly text, this is how fast the apps can launch. Let me open this ebook. So if you are just reading text, um, you can either present the text big which is what you see here. And this is great for those who have poor eyesight. If your eyesight is good, you can actually reduce the font size, the size of the text. So let me just reduce it down to the smallest possible, or maybe um, here. Yeah. When the text is small, your eyes will have to travel more. You can get a lot of reading done before you flip to the next page. And because this tablet is Big, you can use it in landscape orientation and depending on the app you use you can deploy the text with two columns which makes reading easier. One downside to this size is the weight. Now the tablet is 430 grams which is not that heavy I would say. Now personally for me I would prefer to hold the tablet with two hands and if I use the tablet with the case I will definitely hold the tablet with two hands. So if you are someone who prefers something more compact, portable, and more comfortable to hold, get an 8-inch tablet. But if you have to read comics, PDFs, or magazines, then get the 10-inch tablet. But do note that there will be a substantial weight increase over the smaller tablets. Kaleido 3 technology supports 16 levels of grayscale and 4096 colors, so you don't really get that many colors. And there is this e-ink comfort gaze feature that is said to reduce blue light. The black and white resolution is 300 ppi, so the text looks really sharp on this tablet. This gray e-ink canvas to me is on the darker side. If you are reading in a bright room environment, this is how it looks and the contrast looks okay. If the room is not that bright, the contrast will obviously be affected. So for me, if my room is not bright or if it's a cloudy day, I will increase the front light to maybe 50 to 75% to get better contrast. And this with the extra brightness looks so much 
better. The color resolution is 300 ppi. I guess if you look close enough at the colors, you can see slight pixelation. But it's not something that I would notice straight away. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison of e-ink versus LCD. So obviously e-ink will not be able to produce the number of colors or the level of contrast that LCD displays can produce. Here's how a color wheel looks and the colors look okay. Yellow looks slightly greenish but the other colors look okay. By okay I mean green looks like green, blue looks like blue and red looks like red. It's just that on e-ink or with e-ink the colors will look muted and desaturated. Here's a look at some yellow bananas and they look all right. Colors on the e-ink canvas are more muted and desaturated and on the LCD display you can see they are more vibrant. The selling point of e-ink displays is there is no backlight, so they are more comfortable for reading for long periods of time. The easiest way to improve visual quality for the e-ink display is to increase the brightness for the front light, and I usually have this at 75%, so now it looks better. You can also tweak the color settings, so I have this shortcut set to the bottom left, where if I swipe up, I can call up the e-ink center. Some of the color controls may not be available depending on the app you use. For example, with this comic, I'm actually using the new reader app to open the CBZ file. If you open this comic using Amazon Kindle, you will have more options here, which I will show you later on. Dark color enhancement will make the colors darker. So let me just show you. You can just slide the slider and the colors are darker now but they don't look better. So usually I leave this at 30%, which is the default. And let me just refresh the page first. So this is how the actual colors look. And now I want to increase the vivid enhancement from zero to maybe 50%. Can you see the difference? There is slight difference, but again, it's not like it's visually better. Let me just refresh this page again. Yep, it doesn't look significantly better compared to 0% vivid enhancement. And lastly, let's look at color brightness. So let me just reset this and increase color brightness all the way up to 100%. And now let me refresh the page again. Yep, I personally can't see any difference unless I have two tablets side by side to compare. In other words, I usually just read the comics at default settings. And now let me open up the same comic using Amazon Kindle. Let me just use this navigation bar to go to the home page. Let me go to the library page to look for the same comic again. So now when I swipe up from the bottom left, these settings for the refresh modes will appear and this will affect the amount of ghosting and also how fast the pages will flip. So there are five options here. There is HD. So HD has good display effect, suitable for general text reading. For the balance mode, it has slightly heavier ghosting, suitable for thumbing through documents, and for fast, this has slight detail loss and it's suitable for browsing websites. For ultra fast, there is heavy detail loss and this is suitable for playing videos. And there is regal with minimal ghosting, but there will be slight flickering with dark backgrounds and this is suitable for light colored backgrounds. And now let me show you the differences between the five refresh modes. By the way, you can set specific refresh modes for specific apps you use by using this settings button here. So if you want ultra fast refresh for your web browser, you can select a web browser and set it to ultra fast. I'm going to keep this at balance mode because it's actually the best mode. So right now I'm using HD refresh mode and let's have a look. So this is a page of black and white comics. Let me flip to the next page. Notice the page flipping animation is quite fast and I don't see any ghosting for black and white comics. 
Amazon Kindle has this very obvious page flip animation, but here it's pretty fast. I can see ghosting. This is the ghosting image from the previous page. Let me switch over to the previous page again. So this is the images and we have the images here as well. This is the next page and the next page you can see the ghosting still remains in addition to the refresh modes you can also go into the settings to change the number of pages it takes to refresh the pages so you can tap here you can choose never to refresh or refresh from 1 to 30 taps and now i'm going to switch over to the balance refresh mode Let's flip to the next page. I'm not sure if you can see it, but now you can almost see the page moving. Yeah, but it's still quite fast. And now this is the next page. There is still ghosting or image retention, but it's not as bad compared to HD mode. Probably because as you were flipping the page, the page flipping animation actually clears the ghosting. And this is the visual quality you can expect, which is pretty good by e-ink standards. There is slight ghosting if you are looking for it, but this is actually much better compared to the HD mode. I've just switched over to using the fast refresh mode. Okay, I can still see the pitch moving animation. We have the cactus there. There is ghosting again, and this looks very similar to the balance refresh mode. So I don't really see any difference between fast versus balance refresh mode. And now I'm using ultra fast. Okay, I can see the pitch moving faster. Yep, it's definitely moving faster, and I can see ghosting there as well. It's just slightly faster compared to fast. And let's switch over to the last one, Regal. Let me use the slider to go to the black and white page. So notice I can actually swipe left and right and the page will sort of refresh very obviously, the flicker. There is the flicker. So if you are reading black and white comics, the flicker will still be there, but it's not as obvious compared to reading like full page colored comics such as this page here if i tap here and flip the flicker is very obvious because this is one whole page of color i personally find the flickering for regal mode to be distracting so for reading i prefer balance mode which is a good compromise for the amount of ghosting and the speed of the page refreshing or moving yeah so this is fast enough for me and the visual quality is pretty good and I can swipe left and right like this. And the animation is pretty smooth by e-reader standards. Yeah, so this is actually not too bad. Let me show you uh, how web browsing looks with the balance mode. So let me just go to the apps library and open Microsoft Edge. Web pages are able to load quite quickly and as I am scrolling through, you can see the page animation actually moves quite quickly and smoothly, but not as smooth compared to LCD displays with higher refresh rates like 60 hertz. Um, the main limitation here for web browsing is the limited number of colors and uh, levels of contrast that support it. So when there is gray, gray is difficult to see because Kaleido 3 only supports 16 levels of grayscale. So there is actually this gray search box which is outlined but I can't see the box because I can't see the gray. That's due to the lack of contrast. The typing response response is I would say fast enough so let me just load a page for you okay see how fast that page actually loaded yeah let me go back again and load a different page okay that is how fast the page loaded it's really fast much faster than I expected there's a video here so let's play and see what happens 
Okay, the video animation is actually smooth, but you can definitely see the refresh rate is not that high. It's usable by e-ink, e-reader standards, but I personally won't be watching any videos on this tablet. And now let's talk about the system, the performance, and the UI. So this tablet is running on Android 12 with a custom UI from the company, and this UI is very simple. There are six tabs on the left side for library, which will automatically sort all the content from your internal storage into this, well, for uh, buckets or folders. I don't find this very useful. There is store, which will give you access to all the copyright free books. I don't find this very useful as well. There is notes, which is the note taking feature, which I will show you later. And this is actually pretty good. There is storage, which will show you the internal files and folders, and they will sort according to different categories. Apps is the apps folder where you can see all the apps you have installed. And Google Play Store is included, which is a huge selling point because this will allow you to install all the ebook apps that you use. So I have Amazon Kindle here to assess all the books that I have purchased from Amazon. And I have Libby here, which can connect to my local library to borrow books for free. You can install note-taking apps as well. And of course, web browsers. You can install anything you can find from the Google Play Store. And the last tab here is settings, which is self-explanatory. All right, let's take a look at the handwriting and note-taking performance. I'm using the default note-taking app. Let's open up this page here. On the left side, we have all these tools, which I will not go through because it's going to make this review two hours long, like a feature movie. The pens are located here at the top and you can add more pens as shortcuts. So when you tap on a pen, you can see the color swatches. This is orange red. This is sky blue, grape. If you cannot see the colors properly, you will have to rely on the name of the color. And these are the five different brushes you can choose. There is pen, this is brush pen, ballpoint pen, pencil marker. I'm just going to go with pen and you can use this slider here to adjust the thickness of the line. And you can see as I slide, there is ghosting effect, which is okay. All right, let's write something. Notice the letters are able to come up really fast. So the latency is much better than I expected. The app and the pen is able to capture my handwriting style quite well. And as you can see, there is pressure sensitivity, so I can get the lines to taper quite nicely. And there is this you can use this for drawing as well because the latency is actually fast enough it's just that you will be limited to the handwriting and note taking tools there will not be um, texture brushes or multiply modes wow this is actually pretty fast let's see how the pencil brush looks it actually looks pretty good. And notice as I am drawing, I'm able to connect the lines without the lines overshooting or without any gaps. So the cursor tracking is very accurate. Let me try and tilt the brush to see if I can get the broad strokes. Oh, I can actually get the broad strokes. So if I hold the pen vertically, you can see the thin lines. And now I tilt the pen, I can get the broad strokes. And now if I hold the pen vertically and switch to tilt, yeah, I can get the thin and broad transition, which is very nice. And this almost looks like real pencil. Let's test handwriting recognition. By the way, there is palm rejection. I'm going to tap here, AI, and select text recognize and it's going to convert the page 
So it's able to recognize my handwriting quite accurately, but it added this full stop at the end. And you can see I don't have any full stop here. Take a look at these two letters, E, S, yeah. It was able to read that as well. Let's tap reflow. And we have the editable text here. Once you're on this page, the previous page with the handwritten notes is gone because it's all converted. So if you want to go back and write some more, uh, just go back and write some more before you convert this. The notes are stored onto internal storage. And if you want to back up your notes, you will have to use the cloud storage services provided by the company. This is Microsoft OneNote. So let's select a brush. I'm going to increase the brush width to something thicker. I'm going to choose a red and it's difficult for me to differentiate all these red looking light colors so I'm going to choose this notice as I am writing the lines are thin and also the latency is pretty fast so when I tap on the screen the lines will update to the actual brush in other words, when you are writing, you will not be able to see how thick those lines are. But this is still able to capture my handwriting quite accurately. It's just that I won't be able to see how thick the lines are going to be. It still reacts, with, reacts to pressure though. Let's look at drawing apps. And this app is Concepts and the latency is very bad. All the drawing apps I've tested have very bad latency, so this tablet is not really suitable for drawing unless you don't mind drawing with the default note-taking app. Finger gesture shortcuts work. Now whether the shortcuts will work will really depend on the app you use. The last thing I want to talk about is battery life, which is something very difficult for me to test because it really varies on how you use the tablet. Sometimes I use the tablet with increased brightness. Sometimes I have the Wi-Fi on, sometimes it's off. Sometimes I'm using the web browser or sometimes I'm just reading my uh, eBooks from Amazon Kindle or Libby. And from this app that I'm using to track the battery life. It says that I can get six hours of on-screen time. So that's the number from the app and that can vary depending on how you use the tablet. Having said that, I can say very confidently that this tablet has pretty good battery life because I'm using the tablet mostly with 75% brightness and I don't have to worry about battery life. So if you use this without the front light, this can last for like many, many days. So battery life is good. All right, to conclude, this is a beautiful tablet with solid build quality. The overall performance is quite responsive for an e-reader. The visuals look really sharp and there is color support, even though you only get like 4,000 over colors, so it's limited color support. But having colors is still better than having no colors. It does make reading comics more satisfying. And while I talk about reading comics, this 10 inch, 10.3 inch display is best for reading documents where you cannot adjust the font size, such as comics, PDFs, and magazines. So if you read those um, comics, PDFs, and magazines often, then I highly recommend you get a 10 inch or larger tablet. If you're just reading text, you can go with 8 inch, it doesn't matter. But for PDFs and comics, um, being able to see the text at larger sizes is just more satisfying and enjoying and comfortable, better for your eyes. Downsides, well, the placement of the USB-C port can definitely be better and uh, auto rotation is too sensitive. So is this tablet, is this e-reader worth the money? Well, you can decide. And if you are interested to buy this, you can check out the purchase links that I have for you in the video description below. I hope this review is useful. See you guys in the next video. Bye.